Hi, Dave Youngquist, Michigan Toy Soldier on YouTube. Welcome to part two of painting a William Britton Master. In the last part of this series, I got the face completed. Now we're going to show you how to paint the uniform using the Andrea Blue paint set. Let's get started. You can see that I've base coated the, uh, the Union Blue uh, frock coat. Now, with acrylic paints, I always recommend two coats. First coat is not going to cover completely, and you want to put it on pretty thin so you don't obscure any detail. Uh, the second coat has been applied and is dried, and now I'm going to be using a Andrea Matte Black to put in the shadow colors. The uniform itself was painted with the Andrea Blue paint set, which we'll be using throughout the rest of this particular video. Now, when using black, you just want to outline, and the blue, as you notice, is very, very dark, so we just need to fill in the shadow areas. And again, keep the paint fairly thin, and you can be a little bit, a little bit sloppy here because the belt and all the leather gear on the Union Soldier is black. So always good figures to uh, to practice on. You know, if you're trying to learn how to paint, uh, Shenandoah makes a really wonderful line of uh, 54 millimeter figures. And you see we're going to outline everything, creating a, uh, uh, a natural shadow. Outline that. And then in the creases. And we're going to come back and add our mid-tones and a couple layers of highlights for you also. Let's see, we get all the paint in here. And again, the black's really not going to pop until you lay in your highlight colors and then the definition uh, becomes readily apparent. You can see also that I do like to paint my uh, figures from the inside out. In other words, we paint the face, uniform, and then the gear. That way you're not trying to you know, get your brush into areas that have already been painted. So our next step is to go to our medium highlight color. I am now using color number three in the Andrea blue paint set. Uh, again, the uniform was based with their, their base color, which is number one. And this is quite a bit lighter, but not so light as to cause a, you know, a dramatic contrast. And again, it dries absolutely dead flat. And with this particular color, I'm laying it right next to where we laid the darkest shadow color, the black of course. Get a little more water there. And I'm also going to do the bottom edge of the frock coat where you would get a little bit of a little bit of wear. I'm going to be using a 12 o'clock, you know, Shep Payne method, but what that basically means is you want to hold a light typically directly over the figure to see where your highlights fall. In other words, up in the shoulder areas, it's going to be lighter, a lighter color blue, than it would be down around the belt area. So we're going to add this color blue, but then the real high highlights, we tend to leave off of, off of these areas. Now we get into the sleeve area here. You can see up here we're going to add quite a bit of that color, really lighten it up. And again, also on the cuffs, where again there might be just a little wear and tear. And so we want to lighten that area just a bit. A little bit of color there. Again, you're not seeing any dramatic contrast. That's good because what we're doing is we're building up the layers of shadow and light. Now I'm going to add a bit of color number four, which is a lighter blue, the lightest blue in the in the box actually, and this is what is really going to pop on this figure. Go right back over, and now you start seeing the contrast. We're going to stipple a little bit in there, a little bit here on the upper shoulder. Again, I'm not doing the back of the figure, just uh, 
for time saving, but once I'm done here, I would go back and, of course, do the uh, the entire black. So you can see a little bit of light there, a little bit on the collar, make that stand out, and a thin line of that high highlight color. Again, I mixed the uh, the number four I should mention with the number three, so it doesn't pop too much. And we will do some final highlights just with the uh, the number four color. Again, we want to wear the bottom of the jacket out just a little bit. Put a little, just a little bit there, a bit more there. Now we're going to go to color number four, pure, which is a very, very bright blue. But tonally, it matches perfectly, so we can add just a bit more of that and we want to be very selective on where we're placing this. Again, I'm going to do just down the the edge of the coat right there. Just the very inside edges of the of the collar edge of the cuffs and then over just on the highest points of the sleeve. As you can see, I'm just doing the top. And you can see how this figure is now really starting to come alive. Now that the frock coat has been painted, I'm going to paint the pants. And there, it's actually a mix of Vallejo gray-blue and Andrea color uh, blue set number one, which was the base coat for the, for the frock coat. And what I want to stress is that quite often you see uh, Union Sky Blue Blue pants painted very, very light blue. And Ken Olson was a big help to me on this. I mean, you see reenactors quite often wearing these really light blue pants. Um, and some of them undoubtedly were, but for the most part, they were a darker shade of blue than most people think. So this is a definitely a nice blue and it really pops. I'll get this finished up for you for our next video which we were going to be in which we will be painting all of the details, the uh, the Springfield rifle, etc. and we'll show you how we uh, we accomplish all the real fussy detail work. And as always, I really appreciate you stopping by. It's been Dave Yonquist. Mish Toy on YouTube.